Now we are going to look at section 2-2 for chapter 2 and review how transactions affect T accounts. So our goals for section 2-2 are to define accounting terms related, relating to analyzing transactions into their debit and credit parts, identifying how accounting practices related to analyzing transactions into their debit and credit parts. We're going to actually use the T accounts in this section to analyze various transactions and then um, use them to see how they can be used to analyze transactions and the effects they have on the business accounts. First, we're going to look at some additional accounting rules relating to analyzing a transaction. We've talked about this rule before. First of all, every transaction will affect at least two accounts. We need to always keep that in mind when we're working with our accounting transactions. Second is that all accounting um, transactions must affect the accounting equation and keep it in balance. When the accounting equation changes, um, it always must remain in balance. Lastly, when we're analyzing our transactions, we should always ask the following four questions. We've already been asking these questions during Chapter 1, but we're going to continue now as we explore how the debit and credit impacts um, are accounted for. So the first question, what, which accounts are affected? We always ask ourselves when we read the transaction, which accounts are affected? Secondly, how is each account affected? Is it increasing or decreasing? Third, we're going to then break it down into how it is classified or changed. And then lastly, how is each amount entered into the account? Is that account debited or credited? So let's look at our first transaction. On August 1st, we received cash from the owner as an investment of $5,000. Our questions are, which accounts are affected? So in this transaction, our cash account is affected and our owner's investment is affected. Our owner's capital account is, is affected. How is each account classified? Cash is an asset and the owner's capital account is an owner's equity account. If we think back to chapter one, now we think back, how did this transaction affect the classification? In this particular case, we know that if we received cash, then our cash account is going to increase. If we um, had an increase in our cash account and we're jumping over to the other side of the accounting equation, we know that we're going to increase our owner's capital account because that investment increases the owner's equity. So when we look at this from a debit and credit standpoint, we see that we're going to, as we know, increase our cash on our debit side and we're going to increase our owner's capital account on our credit side because increases for an asset account happen on the debit side and increases for the owner's equity account increase on the credit side. So we break it down into this. First, which accounts are affected? Cash and the owner's capital. Second, what is the classification? Cash is an asset. The owner's capital account is an equity. Third, how is each classification changed? So we see that our cash is increased and our owner's capital account is increased. Therefore, if we're increasing our asset, we're going to debit it. And if we're increasing our um, capital account, we're going to credit it. This also adds to one of the rules that we would have. For every transaction, we're going to have credits equal debits. So there will always be an equal debit and an equal credit for every transaction. So therefore, if you're thinking in terms of two debits, it's not possible. You must always have a debit and always have a credit that equal each other. 
Let's look at another transaction. Paid cash for supplies, $275. We break it down into our questions. If we look at question one, we see what are the two accounts that are affected? First, our supplies account. Second, our cash account. What is happening to these two accounts? Well, if we're buying supplies, then our supplies balance is going to be going up. Oh, my bad. We, we know that <laughs> our two accounts that are affected are asset accounts, both. Okay, this is question number three. How is each cl account um, classification changed? We see that our supplies are going to be increasing. We also know that when we pay cash, we know our cash account is going to be decreasing. So therefore, we know that we're going to debit our supplies account because our supplies account, we know that our supplies account is increasing and we know that we're going to credit our cash account because we know our credit, our cash account is going to be decreasing. And again, this follows that last rule where we're going to debit one account and credit another account both for equal amounts Let's move to a third transaction. Paid cash for insurance. Again, we have our four questions. Which accounts are affected? We know that our prepaid insurance account is affected, as the transaction in indicates, and we know that our cash is affected. Our second, our second question, what account classification? Both of these are assets. When we think of one side of the accounting equation, we always know that that means we're going to have one account that increases and one account that decreases. So we know here, if we're buying insurance, that that account is going to increase. And if we're using cash to purchase that insurance, we know that then our cash account is going to decrease. So therefore, if we're increasing an asset account, we're going to debit that asset account. And if we're uh, pardon me, decreasing our cash account, we know that our cash account decreases on the credit side. Keep in mind, again, that the normal side balance is the side that the account increases on. So for uh, any asset account, the normal side balance is the debit side. So therefore, they will always increase on the debit side and decrease on the opposite side, which is the credit side. Let's look at a fourth transaction. Bought supplies on account from Supply Depot. Again, our four questions. So what are our two accounts that are affected? Our accounts that are affected are supplies and accounts payable Supply Depot. Our supplies account is an asset account. However, our accounts payable Supply Depot is a liability account. We know that when we've jumped over to the other side of the accounting equation, that means that there's going to be the same type of event happening on either side of the accounting equation. In this case, if we know that we bought supplies, we know that our supplies account is going to be increasing. We know that our supplies increase on the debit side. Their normal side balance is a debit. So therefore, they're increasing on the debit side. If we have a liability, however, we know that those liabilities, they increase on the credit side. Their normal balance side is the credit side. So therefore, we're going to show the increase for the accounts payable supply depot on the credit side. And then this follows and makes sense with our rule that we always have to have an equal debit and an equal credit. So we see that our accounts, uh, pardon me, our supplies is debited for 500 and our accounts payable liabilities to Supply Depot is increased by $500 credit. Let's look at another transaction. On August 11th, we paid cash on account to Supply Depot. What are the two accounts that are affected? Our two accounts are cash and accounts payable supply depot. What types of accounts are these? Cash is an asset 
and accounts payable is a liability. What is happening to our cash account? Our cash account is going down. Okay, Our cash account is decreasing. So therefore, if it's decreasing, then if we're jumping over to the other side of the accounting equation, our liabilities account must also be decreasing in order to keep the accounting equation in balance. So both of them are decreasing. So in this particular case, we're going to debit our liability accounts payable liability uh, accounts payable supply depot, and we're going to credit our cash to show that that's decreasing. And again, this follows that same rule where we're going to have a debit and a credit that equal each other. That is the end of section 2-2 of our notes. Please click on the link to answer the questions pertaining to this section of the notes. In addition, look for the video on the work together for 2-2. Thank you.